How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to teach you how to identify your backyard birds and much more coming up. Hello again and thank you for joining me on this video. I've been wanting to make this for a while. I got quite a few questions on how to identify common birds and how to identify backyard birds. So I thought I would make this video and I wanted to make it really informative so it helps people not just in my area in Eastern Canada, but you can be anywhere in the world. And I'll show you exactly how you can identify your common birds. So I broke this video up into three sections. The first section is how to figure out which birds are common in your area. Section number two is a quick and easy way that I like to practice my backyard birds. And section number three is actually how to identify those birds. So I didn't just wanna show the birds that I get in my backyard and tell you their ID, because that's not really helpful for everybody. Maybe if you're in my area, that would be helpful. But if you're in California or if you're across the pond in Europe, Everybody has different backyard birds, so instead of me just telling you which birds I get, I decided I wanted to show you exactly how you can figure out which backyard birds you have in your area. So since you're watching this video, I'm going to assume that you're a beginner birder. You might know some of the birds in your yard, you might know none of them, and that's fine. The most important thing is don't feel overwhelmed. It's very easy to feel overwhelmed when you're first getting into birding. The best way to overcome the feeling of being overwhelmed is to create a base or a foundation. So when you're building a house, you don't start with the roof first, you start with the foundation. So your foundation is gonna be your most common species in your area, because those are the ones you're gonna encounter the most, whether it's in your backyard or whether you're birding out in the field, you should know the heck out of your common species. And once you know those common species, then you can start working your way up to the roof, which is essentially all the rare birds or vagrants in your area. So I'm gonna show you right now how you can figure out your common species in your area using eBird. So to start, what you wanna do is go to eBird.org and that'll bring you to this main homepage. If you haven't created an account already, you should create an account, it's free and it provides so much valuable information, especially as you grow as a birder and you wanna find more locations to bird or you wanna search for specific species, this is the ultimate guide where you go and you can find all this information for free. It's crazy. People would pay hundreds or thousands of dollars a year to use this and the entire database is free for you. So definitely create an account if you haven't. I already have an account, so I'm just gonna sign in. And once you sign in, what you'll see is your stats, if you scroll down, you'll see some news. If you scroll down even more, there's world stats. Where you want to go to figure out your most common species is under the Explore tab. So you can explore by species, explore by region. There's a ton of things you can do, but uh, that's probably another video's worth of stuff. I'm just going to get down to the nitty gritty for this one. What you want to do is go to Target Species. So once you click Target Species, what this page is about is you're basically asking eBird to show you species that you've never seen before in certain areas. If you see up here, it says species you haven't seen, and you're gonna to wanna to enter your region. So since we're doing our backyard birds, you wanna get down to the smallest level you can. So there's county, state, province, or country. For me, I live in the Montreal area, so it's the Montreal County. So I'll type in Montreal, and that gives me Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Then on the right over here, you have time of year. Usually most of the common backyard birds will be around year round. It's not the case for every bird, but most of the time it is. I'm gonna keep it on year round. If you wanted to, you can go into custom and choose specific months or specific ranges. So if you're going to a new location and you wanna know between like September and November, for example, you can do that. But for this uh, tutorial, I'll go year round. And then at the bottom here, it's saying for your specific region. So if you're watching this, I'm guessing you're new to eBird. You can put any of these because since you don't have any information on your eBird account, it won't affect your final outcome. So I'm just gonna put Montreal County. So put your county, that's gonna be fine. So if you're new to eBird, again, on this side, you can put any one you want, your life list, year list, month list, day list, doesn't matter because if you don't have any information on your eBird yet, none of them will change depending what you put. I'm gonna put day list because I have eBirded in Montreal before, but I don't think I've ever eBirded on the 25th of April. So this is not gonna affect any of the data. It's gonna show me all the common species anyways. And now you're gonna come down here and click show target species. So after you hit show target species and you scroll down, on the left, you'll see a list of birds, and on the right, you'll see a frequency percentage. And what the frequency percentage is, is an average of the frequency in which a bird is added to a checklist and submitted through a checklist. So your most common species are gonna have the highest frequencies. So if you look on the list, uh, say for example, we just go with the first one, American Crow. So 
once you click on the species, uh, this is what will pop up. eBird shows you a bunch of different photos and tells you if it's an adult, juvenile, female, male. Down here we have our weekly bar chart. And what this does is it shows you every week what the frequency is that this species appears on checklists. So I just want to show you what happens when you click on a species in eBird. It's, it gives you a ton of information and even shows you media. So you can scroll through photos and that'll help you with ID because uh, you'll see the bird from many different angles, many different lighting situations. But if we go back, I'm going to give you a little bit of a challenge. When you put this information in in your area, I want you to learn your top 25 most common species. As I said before, that's going to be your base, that's going to be your foundation. And interestingly enough, if you look at this list, out of the top 25 species, 22 of them visit backyards. So generally the most common species, not all the time, but a lot of the times, will be backyard birds. Now does this mean that they're actually the most common birds? Maybe not. Maybe it's just that people have them in their backyard so people are submitting more checklists on them. The only three species on this list that technically aren't backyard birds are ring-billed gulls, which I get them a few times a day as flyovers. They don't actually land in my yard. Same thing with the mallard and the Canada goose. So those three species technically don't land in the yard, but you always see them flying over. So you can argue that the top 25 species are all backyard birds. And when you're learning these birds, I don't want you to just learn about the vibrant males. Try to identify the females and the juveniles because these are all the species that you're gonna encounter on a daily basis. So I'll talk a little bit later on how to actually identify your top 25 species and give you tips and tricks on what to look for and resources you can use to help you identify. But yeah, learn your top 25 most common species. I guarantee you, once you know these, you're gonna be able to identify a majority of what comes into your backyard. And since you know these, when something new shows up, you'll know that it's something new because once you know these species, it's like, okay, I can deduct that it's not any of these 25 and that's how you get your starting point and that's the best way to not feel too overwhelmed with birding when you're first beginning. Now that you have your top 25 species, I'm gonna show you a website that I use to help quiz me on these birds. What you wanna do is go to a site called Quizlet. Everything I'm about to show you is free. And once you create your account, you can sign up with Facebook or create your own account through your email. Once you've created your account, you can go under the Create tab right here. This will create a new study set. So we'll call this one Backyard Birds. And all you're gonna do now is type in the species name. So if you go back to your uh, tab on eBird, you can just go down the list and start adding the species. I'll add a couple just to show you what I'm talking about. So American Crow, Black Cap Chickadee, and Northern Cardinal, we'll start with those three. So we type in American Crow, so that's the term. And then under the definition, instead of putting a definition, you can click this little image icon here. This will go through the database and show you a few image options. Since it's the free version, you only access to the first two pages of it, uh, but that's fine most of the time, especially for North American birds, it's enough. So you can put in American Crow, there you go. Now going down the list, we had Black Cap Chickadee. There you go. And under definition, click the image icon. And there you go, Black Cap Chickadee. If you wanna verify that the photos you're putting into your quiz are the same species uh, as your list, what you can do is just go into your eBird account. Uh, on your list, click say for example, Black Cap Chickadee, check the photo and then just make sure that the photo you're putting in is that species. This is if you're not familiar with these birds, put that in. There's another thing that I like to do, and you don't have to do this right away if you're just starting, but you can also put in, say for example, Northern Cardinal, and then in brackets, put female. So now when you search, you'll get images of the female. So as I said before, don't just add the vibrant males, make sure you're adding the females and the juveniles, so you can do that. And let's just put in, Northern Cardinal Juvenile, there you go, images, and if you click on this and you look, scraggly little guy, not much color, definitely a juvenile, and as I said before, check eBird if you're not sure, just to confirm that that's actually the species. And you would just go through this and you would do that for all your species, you can put in yeah, male, female, juvenile, and once you do that and you're done, click create. Once you've created your study set, Quizlet gives you a few options to study the images that you put up. So I'll start on the left, I'll show you a few of these quickly. Uh, these are just flashcards. What I would suggest is putting on shuffle. Sometimes we just remember the order we place the birds in uh, on the slide. So instead of just remembering that that species is a specific species, you might just remember that, oh yeah, I remember putting the black cap chickadee second. So this is a black cap chickadee. Uh, so put on shuffle so it changes everything up. 
And in this mode, what it'll do is it'll show you the image. And once you think you know it or you're not sure and you want to check, you just have to click. And oh gosh. There's the audio that tells you the name of the bird. Uh, you can take that off if you want. And yeah, so that's just a really quick way. It's just like flashcards. So the second one that we have is learn. If you click learn, it'll show you the image and it'll give you four options. And this is really useful when you're first starting out and you might not be familiar with the names of the birds. Uh, so having this is probably the best place to start is with a multiple choice. So here we would see that this is in fact the Northern Cardinal Juvenile. Correct, nicely done, perfect, go back. And then there's a few others. You can write out the names of the species. So this would be Northern Cardinal Female. Writing a name down just helps you remember it a little bit better. So yeah, there's quite a few options here to test you on it. Probably one of my favorite ones is test, because once you have 60 species, for example, there's the written portion, there's a multiple choice question, and true or false, and nothing is more thrilling than quizzes on birds. So that's really fun. I just wanted to show you this quickly, because once you know all your species and you want to practice them, you can have this app on your phone, you can practice anywhere, which is fantastic. Instead of waiting for species to show up in your backyard, this is a good way to practice. Now that you have your top 25 species and you know how to practice them, I want to finally get into how to identify these species. Now that you're ready to start identifying your backyard birds, I'm going to start you off with this diagram. I strongly suggest you print this out because most field guides and most descriptions when you're trying to identify a bird will use these terms. So you want to know the specific parts of a bird, you want to know what the field guide's talking about when it's trying to help you ID something. Print it out, have it folded up in your field guide, it's probably the best option. And really learn these as you learn your common species. So let me give you a quick example. Say we're looking out at our backyard bird feeder and we see this beautiful male red cardinal show up. We can just look at the color and there's not much else in our area that looks like this. So I can look at those top 25 species that I showed you before and find Northern Cardinal and say, okay, it was this one because it's red. But try not to do that, especially when you're first starting out. I would suggest try to find three characteristics on every bird you're looking at. So when you look at a Northern Cardinal like this, try to say, okay, first of all, it's red. That's one characteristic. You can say how the crest is elevated or usually elongated if it's down. And you can say it has a bright orange bill. Right there, that's three quick ones that will help you identify the species. For a species like the Northern Cardinal, it's pretty easy to do this. But say you're going down to a species like the Song Sparrow. It's a very common sparrow in my area, but it gets significantly harder to actually pinpoint three characteristics because there's quite a bit going on. You don't know what's important, what's not. So I'll suggest doing three specific things. The first one is looking at the general shape and color of the species. So this is a little bit harder in the image because you don't really have any size context, but uh, in real life they're relatively small, so you can say it's a smaller bird. And if you already know a bird like a cardinal, for example, you can say, okay, it's smaller than a cardinal. And it's overall a rusty brown. So that's your first hint. Secondly, I would look for one thing that really stands out to you on the bird. So whether that's a really long tail, whether that's wing bars, or in the case of the song sparrow here, the thing that really stands out to me is that dark smudge on the center of the breast. So that's probably the thing that I would associate most with the bird after the general shape and size. And then third, I've said this in a previous video, I would look at that bill. So the beak will tell you so much about what family that bird is in, it'll tell you what it feeds on. And with those three things, that's a great starting point. There's obviously more you can take into consideration when you're looking at a bird, but as beginners, you don't wanna feel overwhelmed. So start with those three points and that'll be a great guidance, especially with your top 25 species. If you're seeing something in your backyard, it's probably one of those. And another thing I would suggest is don't forget about the females and the juveniles. When I was first starting, I would often overlook them for some reason. So I would just go through the list and be like, oh, it's none of these species. And then as you do some further digging, you realize that, oh, okay, it's actually just a female. So look at this house finch, for example, you see the male, it's bright red, it's beautiful. And then you come to the female, it's a little bit more drab. And females and juveniles are usually more drab because they're in the nest and they need to be protected from predators. So they're brown usually to blend in and the males are vibrant to attract the females. So don't forget about females and juveniles. Sometimes it's easy to overlook them, but a lot of the times if you see a new bird in your backyard and you're not 100% sure what it is, try to think of females before you think of a new species because that'll sometimes be the case. What I strongly suggest for you to do is always have your camera, phone, binoculars next to you 
or near a window at all times, just so if there's a bird that shows up that you don't know, take a picture of it. It doesn't have to be extremely clear. As long as you can get the overall coloration of the bird, it can definitely help. And the ability to sit there and look at an image and compare it with other ones, you can see very specific details on what's different, what's the same. It helps so much. That's probably the thing that helped me the most when I was first getting into birding. So if you've watched up to this point and it still seems a little bit overwhelming, I have a solution for you that can help narrow down which species you're actually seeing in your backyard. And that's through the Merlin app. So I'll get into the app now and I'll show you what I'm talking about. If you don't have Merlin yet, open up your app store or your play store. Type in Merlin. This is by the Cornell Lab of Ornithology. So that's what the app icon looks like. Once you have it, you can open it up. You're gonna have to download the bird pack for your area. So if you see here, I have it downloaded for Canada East and I have a couple others. But yeah, no matter where you are, you can download it. They don't have everywhere in the world, but they're adding more and more every month. If you're in North America, they'll have all your areas. They have Central America and some of South America. And then across the pond too, they have a few areas. So download whichever one is for you. I'm gonna start stick with the Canada East one. So once you have your bird pack downloaded, there's a few options you can do. Uh, there's start bird ID, get photo ID, and explore birds. I'll show you all three quickly. They're all very, very useful. Starting bird ID basically takes you into a window that if you're in your backyard or if you're close to your house, you can do your current location and you're gonna tell Merlin what you saw, what you remember, the date, everything like that. And they're gonna formulate a list of potential birds that it could be. So I actually had a new species in my backyard this morning and it was a lifer, it was a fox sparrow. So let's see if Merlin can get it. So the date I'll put as today, April 25th, the size. So this is the size range. So sparrow size are smaller, between sparrow and robin, robin, crow, goose sized or larger. It was sparrow sized or smaller. So the two main colors that really stand out to me on the fox sparrow is the buff brown and the red rufous color. So those are the two I'll go with. I'll click next. And was the bird eating at a feeder, swimming or wading, on the ground, in trees or bushes, on a fence or wire, soaring or flying. It was on the ground and let's identify it. So now we can go through the list and see what they give us as options. And this is where it comes into play where you want to remember three characteristics. Going through the list, chipping sparrow, fox sparrow, American tree sparrow, swamp sparrow. So a lot of these are sparrows because I put sparrow size or smaller. But you would just basically go through this list and with the characteristics that you remember, you would try to identify them. And you can scroll through so you'll see adults, you'll see females, you'll see males, immatures. So this really gives you all the information you need to make a judgment call on what you actually saw. Every time I've used this, the option has always been there for the bird that I actually saw. Now we'll get into the second part, which is photo ID. So as I was saying before, uh, if you have your camera nearby or you have your phone and you're taking photos through your binoculars, this is where you can actually input those photos and it'll give you the same list that I just showed you in the previous one, but based on your photo. So it's a little bit more accurate. I'm going to choose a photo of the field sparrow that I had in my yard the other day and it says zoom until your bird fills the box. So we'll zoom in on the field sparrow, there he goes, he's in the box. Click next and then it's going to ask you for the location and the date. So my location was my current location because I'm at my house and I was right in my backyard and the date was April 19th. Now we click identify and now it's going to create a list of the possible birds that it sees and there you go, the first one is field sparrow marked as rare and the second one is a chipping sparrow but as you can see from the image that I originally submitted it's definitely a field sparrow if you look down here and the last part is explore birds so if you click that it just gives you an entire list of birds in your area so this is for Canada East so it's all of Eastern Canada you can also go up here and choose specific filters so if you want to go by likely birds in my specific location right now and not year round, I can go for this date, so the 25th today, let's say today, and then I go back, it's gonna show the likely birds in my area. So these are the species that I'm most likely to encounter, but as you can see, it's pretty high number. This is 182, uh, so I would probably suggest if you're beginning to start with those top 25 that I suggested and uh, slowly work your way up to get more and more of these and to learn their IDs. So I hope this tutorial was helpful for you guys. I hope you learned something. I wanted to incorporate more than just how to identify a bird. I wanted to use apps and resources online to show you how you can really gather all this information and put it towards learning your backyard bird species. So if you learned something, please leave a like, a comment, and subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Happy birding.